I'm going to start this video off with a full disclosures. Um, one being, I'm home alone with my kids. So if you hear them in the background, they are fine. Second, I am not a medical professional whatsoever. What I'm about to talk about in this video is my experience with postpartum and how I went through it and how just because I've gotten asked about it so much. Now, this this disclosure comes with the fact that like I'm not telling you what to do. This is just my experience with it and how I handled it. Okay, let's get started. Okay, also, I just need one more disclosure. This is not a cry for help. This is not stabbing at anybody. I'm past it. I'm good now. I'm healthy now. I fixed myself. I worked on myself and I've moved past all of my feelings. This is just me simply opening up. I'm going to try to get through this without crying because I did struggle so much and I hid behind it so much, but let's get started. Okay, so I had the babies in July, on July 3rd, and with four placentas and four babies growing inside of me, I was warned, warned multiple times, that my body coming off of that much hormone change is going to hit me like a brick wall, as it does just any normal person going through pregnancy and coming off of pregnancy or like... I don't know how to describe it, but basically it's normal for your body to do this. Um, I am a very strong-willed person. I'm very tough, so I believe that I'm very tough. I'm just going to talk about myself a little bit. It is what it is. Um, I don't like to show emotions. I don't like to cry. So this hit me. I'm already getting so emotional because I'm having to relive this. And y'all, I swear I'm fine now. I swear I moved past it. I'm good. I'm healthy now. But like having to like rethink of where I was and how far I've come. I gather myself but okay okay so I had the babies in July and oh my gosh I don't even think I'm gonna make it through this video okay I'm okay pull it together okay I had the babies in July and the day that I had the babies moved so fast um I went into active labor I remember telling my husband like hey I really need to go to the hospital like something's not right um I can just I felt something change in my body and I was told from the very beginning like trust your body trust your instincts when you know that a change is happening then you have to trust it so flashback a little bit um a little bit back I felt like I was having blood pressure issues and I made my husband bring me to the hospital local hospital and as soon as I told them I was pregnant with quadruplets they lost their mind um they were like how can we accommodate her like talking like this in front of me um and that scarred me so like anytime I had any like scares or I felt like I was having issues I like really thought about it before I brought it to the surface so this happened and I was like look Brandon like I don't want you to freak out because he was out golfing at the time that this was all going on and I was like I don't want you to freak out but I'm telling you something's different and I mean without me even saying it more than one time he was already in the car like headed back home gets back home and I'm like I think we need to go to the hospital but like let's just like ask my doctor because she gave me her phone number if I had like any issues whatsoever because I was a very high risk pregnancy and I just messaged her and I was like look this is what's going on something just feels off and she was like go to the hospital like if you want to go to your local hospital go if you feel like you can make it here which it was to New Orleans I gave birth in New Orleans then come here and I messaged back she didn't know this at the time but I was like I refuse to go back to my local hospital they didn't I didn't have a good experience the last time I went there being pregnant with this amount of babies um so we're headed we're headed to New Orleans she literally just got off of her flight from a vacation um and she was like come on like I'll tell them you're coming because she wasn't on she wasn't working at this time she's like I'll tell them that you're coming they'll be expecting you what's whatever so we're driving there and y'all like <laughs> this is so bad but like our local hospital freaked me out so bad that I felt so bad. <laughs> I do not know why I'm so emotional today. Oh my gosh. But the local hospital freaked me out so bad that I didn't want to go to the hospital. Like, 
I was like, what if I get there and I'm just the girl who cries wolf? And I remember like driving around the curve, going to the hospital and I was like, Brandon, like, what if we get there and nothing's going on? Like, are you going to be mad at me? And he was like, Megan, like, hush, we're going, you're fine. And y'all like, I was contracting, like I was having contractions. And at the time I didn't know that there were contractions, whatever. I'm like going on a rant, a rant, but whatever. Okay. So this happens. This isn't even the video that I wanted to talk today about today. But, um, so I'm having contractions. We go to the hospital, whatever. And I'm in labor. Um, they try to slow down the labor. Um, I'm going to talk more about my labor in a video with Brandon. Because I want him to kind of be a part of it. So I'm trying not to do too much of that in this video. I give birth to the babies. And y'all, <laughs> this is where I wanted to start the story. So I really just went on a whole rampage for no reason. I did not get to meet my children I can do not know the exact amount of time, but this is so sad thinking about it. Cause like, no mom should have to live through this or go through this. And I knew that this was the way that it was gonna go down, but I guess I just didn't prepare for it, prepare having to live through it. But like, you see like the videos of like the moms getting like handed their babies whenever they come out and them getting to do skin to skin as soon as they're born oh my gosh so emotional today anyway i didn't get to experience that and um i heard their cries so i knew they were okay um they took the babies into a room away from me and then i looked at brandon and i said can you go check on them because they asked him if they wanted to go see them and I was like, yes, go check on them. Like, please take a picture so that you can show me that they're okay. So, anyway, he checks on them. He takes pictures of them. He comes back, and I'm still on the table, and he shows them to me. So, I got to see my kids through a picture. Oh, this is such, like, a poor me story, and I'm so sorry if nobody's, like, interested in this at all. I remember, like, after I gave birth... To the babies I could not sleep like I just wanted to go to the NICU so bad and meet them but I had to wait to make sure like my blood pressure was okay that I was healing okay that I could get down there and everything would be okay they had we had to wait for them to be settled and for them to be okay and like y'all it was such a blur I can't even remember if my husband went to the NICU without me like I can't even remember I'll have to ask him but I just remember like having to wait so long to meet them and like, oh, I felt like it was an eternity, like, oh, uh, anyway, I, and I think I'm so emotional because like they're here now and like they're so healthy and they're doing so good and it just makes me so happy that like I did that. But we made a post on Facebook to like all of our friends and family, like, um, I think it was, it was the day after because we posted for the 4th of July, they were born on the 3rd. And we're like, hey, we just wanted everybody to know the babies were here safely. Um, please respect their privacy and our privacy at this time. And y'all, I don't know if it was because I made that post or what, but this makes me so sad thinking about it. And y'all, I promise I'm fine and I promise I made it through it and I'm okay. But the whole time that I was going through like Nikki life and, um, I had one friend, one friend, maybe two. I know for a fact I had one friend who came over here to my house and made it a point to be with me. Like, people would text me and check on me daily and check on the babies, but I mean like, this one friend, and I don't even know if she wants me talking about her or whatever, so I'm not gonna say her name or whatever, but she made it a point to come over here. I know for a fact once a week. <sighs> and I had family, I had family, but if it wasn't for this one friend in particular, I just don't know like <sighs> mentally if I would have been okay. But anyway, moving past that. So I think like at the beginning of like going through like postpartum or whatever, my entire NICU journey, I think I was going through like like, just, like, day walking, like, just daydreaming, day walking, like, 
just floating through life. Um, Turner decided he wanted to be in the video, but I remember the, um, I'm trying so hard not to cry, but I remember the night or the day that we came home from the hospital, um, back home to get settled back home while the babies were still in the NICU. And my sister-in-law brought us dinner that night because they did like the meal train where you can sign up and um, bring food or whatever. So it was her night to bring us food. And I remember y'all, I got home and I just laid right here on this couch and I put my head on the pillow. And I just felt so empty. Like my belly, cause you know after you give birth, um, my belly was still like squishy and was still there, but there was nothing in it. Like my babies weren't there anymore. I just felt so empty and I felt so lonely. And it was just so hard to go through that and to not have them here with me in person. Cause like for 26 weeks I grew them and I felt them inside of me. And then I couldn't just feel them and see them and be with them all the time. In the hospital that they were at, that they were born at, had cameras where you could, like, watch them and stuff. And I remember me and Brandon would keep them pulled up because that's the only way we could see them when we weren't able to physically be there. Oh, my gosh. It just makes me so sad, like, thinking about that. And, y'all, they seriously have come so far. Like, uh, I just remember going through all of this and, like... Anyway, my sister-in-law didn't come in because she knew that we were going through a lot. And so Brandon, y'all, I couldn't even get off the couch to get the food from her because I was just so numb and so sad. And so Brandon grabbed the food from her at the door and she texted me and she was like, you don't have to reply, but are you okay? And I was like, I'm just sad. Like, it's so hard to explain to people who don't haven't ever been through it like I had my kids in me with me for 26 weeks and then they were just not with me anymore and I know I know y'all like I was warned I was told like they're gonna have to do NICU life they're gonna be premature they're gonna need to be in the NICU for however long but nothing prepares for the way that I felt so um I went through and had mastitis a couple of times and like the days that I had mastitis I used those days as like an excuse to not go see the babies. <laughs> it's so sad thinking about now but like y'all it was just so hard to like constantly like we went over there every single day to see the babies and I'm so thankful for that because we were so involved and like their health like their health their um journey like we knew every single thing that the nurses did to the babies that the nurses had to do that the doctors changed we kept tabs on every single thing that happened to our children because that's what we wanted to do but there was some days where like brandon would go without me because like i genuinely could not get off the couch and like looking back at it I said it was like baby blues because you know some people like go through like the baby blues and they just couldn't I mean it just lasted for a certain season whatever or a certain time period but so let's just whatever I went through NICU life it was terrible um I was sad all the time I just had no motivation to do anything but go and see the babies that's all I wanted to do and then even that like so there were some days where I didn't even want to do that I just wanted to lay on the couch and do nothing um I was pumping and producing milk for them Turner is staring at me like what is this woman crying about and he's kicking his brother in the face <laughs> anyway um I was pumping and that literally drained every single thing from me like oh my gosh pumping life is so hard breastfeeding life so hard um, so the babies were in New Orleans and then they got moved to um they got moved got moved locally to where we live and when they got moved y'all I was a train wreck like I had just finally gotten to the routine over in New Orleans where they were born. I finally was comfortable with the nurses there. Um, so 
shocking. Like my entire body just went into shock because like I finally got where I needed to be with that hospital and then they moved. And Turner, one of the babies was on like a bubble, the bubble machine, it's called CPAP, um, breathing machine. And y'all, he just screamed and screamed and screamed. And a couple of times I moved the machine and like fixed it to how it was supposed to be. And he would get so aggravated with it, he would pull it out and just scream. And I just remember he screamed and then it got me so emotional. I started crying and then finally the nurse walked in and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, he's not okay. Like he's not happy. He hates the machine. Like something has to change. So I hid in the corner and just cried because he was crying. He was upset, but they did listen to me and we tried him on a different type of breathing machine, which was just like, um, a little support, uh, it's it's not called vapotherm because that's what it was called i don't know exactly what it's called but anyway they ended up switching it and we tried him on that he was able to do it so praise the lord that the nurse walked in when she did and heard me crying and let me be an advocate to, for my son because he hated the bubble machine so much anyway so we swapped him off of it you now like, y'all, I had to ask permission to hold my children. And it was just so heartbreaking. Another time, I just cried in the corner. Like, oh, I never thought, like, in a million years, I'm not even a million years old, but I never thought in my lifetime would I have to ask somebody else for permission to hold my own child. So, that just broke my heart. And this was after, I think, two babies came home. I had to get um, on birth control and I had to go for my appointment to get the birth control um, inserted. And I'll do another video talking about that if anybody wants to know like my experiences with um, birth control, whatever. But I remember going um, to this appointment and I was like, look, like I just have a few questions about, um, this was about the anxiety side of it. I wasn't sleeping. Um, I stayed up. Keep in mind, like, my babies have been sleeping through the night for a while now. But at this time that they were getting up and I was having to get up and pump in the middle of the night. Um, so I was like, hey, like, is there any way that, like, let me just tell you how I'm feeling and you just tell me what you think's going on. So, like, I wasn't sleeping. I would hear, like, the slightest. We had them sleeping with, like, the baby monitors on their feet. And just the single like little beep that I heard oh my gosh I was getting up and I was jumping like are they breathing like anyway and she was like I think what you're going through is postpartum anxiety how about we get you on Zoloft which is she started me on the 50 milligram and this was in October and she said give it about a month to get into your system before you really start feeling like a difference so I was like okay which, if anybody's familiar with Zoloft, it can help with the anxiety side and the depression side. And around Thanksgiving is whenever I really started to, like, feel a difference in, like, my depression. Because I had been pushing down all of these feelings and I didn't even realize how sad I was until I wasn't sad anymore. But, like, I guess just all of the built-upness from, like, the moment that they were born and reflecting on the fact of all of these things that I didn't get to experience that I thought that I would experience when I became a mom finally came down on me. And, like, oh, so hard to just even talk about this because I know, like, it's the experience is completely different for everybody. But um, doing social media, um, I started it whenever I was pregnant. And just simply one video posted um, about how my husband was taking over pretty much everything in the house because I was just so exhausted during my pregnancy and I would come home and need a nap because I was so tired. So that video took off and I did social media all throughout my pregnancy. I did a few during the NICU journey, but honestly y'all, the NICU life was so daunting and so hard and so emotional that I just couldn't. And then the babies finally came home and I was like, look, Brandon, like, I just need to relearn who I am. Like, who I am as a mom, um, who I am individually. Like, my life is completely different. I don't know who I am anymore. Um, so, I took a break from social media for, it was about two months. 
and I just had to figure out me. I had to get my mental health um, straightened out. Um, I am way better now. Oh my gosh, I'm way better now. Like, and then like all of y'all, I mean, y'all just witnessed it. Like anytime I try to like talk about like how I felt, it was, it's just so scarring because nobody, I mean, I'm sure there's some people out there who understand, but nobody like around me or like who I talk to can really understand what I went through. And I remember there was times where like I would go in public and keep in mind like what my children were going through was so scary like oh, now I'm crying again um the number one question was like what are their weights how much do they weigh how much are they weighing you the smallest one of my quads is who came home first their weights have nothing to do with their health like and I catch myself every now and again wondering what babies weigh but then I remember like I did not like that question at all because people would be like, are you feeding them enough? Are they getting enough? Are you doing enough? Like, y'all, <laughs> stop asking me these questions. Like, my babies are in full-on survival mode. Like, oh my gosh, talking about it just, oh. I remember one time we went to go eat at a restaurant and y'all, there. I mean, there was nothing wrong with anybody asking me about the babies or whatever, but like, I was living in the situation and then people would ask me about the situation and I remember I was like I couldn't eat like somebody asked me I mean just a simple question like how's the babies and y'all I I couldn't finish my food I mean I literally told Brandon like we have to take this to go I, I can't sit here and eat I just lost my appetite because I was just so emotional and I didn't realize it at the time like just the thought of like people asking me about my babies like <sighs> Talking about them and just seeing them in the way that they were like they were just so tiny and so like but my babies were tiny and they were so mighty like these are the strongest kids I know literally like if you would have seen where they came from and how they are now and I think that's why I get so emotional about it because I'm just so proud of them like these are my kids like they did the dang thing but I say all of this to end with, you mamas, whoever might be going through the same things that I went through, you are not alone. I will literally be anybody's friend. I will reach out to you if you need a friend to reach out to you. Check on the mamas, y'all. Like, mamas' bodies go through so much. Their brain chemistry goes through so much. Like, they have to literally battle so much when they first become moms. Check on the moms. Like, that baby is getting plenty of attention or those babies are getting plenty of attention. Check on the mamas out there, okay? That's what I wanted to say in this whole video. That's what I wanted this video to prove. Like, do not let new mamas go through being a new mama alone. Be a friend to all of the new mamas out there. I really don't even know if I answered anything that anybody was asking me, but I'm going to end this video with, I am perfectly okay. Like, I'm fine. I get emotional here and there because my babies came from a lot, came from came from a lot like they had to go through a lot to get to where they're at now I'm so proud of them um I have a very supportive family I have a very loving friends like I'm not saying any of that in this video um that I don't have any of that but I want to say thank you to my friends and family for all of the love and support that you guys have shown over the um this time um and please subscribe to my channel it means so much to me you can go follow me on tiktok you can follow me on instagram facebook really all platforms i have all of those so just like subscribe comment down below if you have any questions thank you so much for watching and i'm so very sorry for being emotional <laughs> but um anyway so i'm in labor okay. turner just passed gas i don't know if y'all heard that but, um,